Good morning from the 17th park of our USA road trip. Today we're here at Kings Island in Ohio. We are so excited. There is 14 coasts at this park, so we've got quite a lot to fit in. I'm really excited to experience Orion, which is new since last time I was here. It's a 2020 B&M Giga Coaster. But you know what, Charlotte? There's so many great rides for you to get on here I today. I'm so excited. I know what you're looking forward to, Banshee. Oh, I love the sign for this. It's just so iconic, so I can't wait to see it in person. That's the thing with American parks. They have amazing signs, don't oh, they? Oh, it's just fantastic. And this park has a very impressive entrance, as you can see here, just behind us. The park opened in 1972, and yet you can see they've actually got an Eiffel Tower just there That's at the bottom so behind cool. us. You got all the fountains here, and yeah, really excited to be back here at this park today. Park hours are 10 a.m. till 10 p.m. Oh, I do love the main entrance street here with all the buildings down on both sides, and yeah, down there in the middle, you got a fantastic fountain package which really is awesome. There's all the nice seating around here, all the trees. It's got a lot of charm and character to it. And of course, you get to see the epic skyline that Kings Island has to offer. There's Orion, which I'm really looking forward to. I mean, this is really nice. It's very impressive when you walk into the park and see all this. Oh, we've come right down here then to the back of the park to start our day with a ride on Orion. I've been really looking forward to riding this. It's got a 300 foot drop just there. And yeah, it really does look the part. And I've got to say, impressed so far because it's open 10 minutes earlier than advertised. It's only 10 to 10. And yeah, ride's already open. Let's go and give this a go. Orion, you're looking forward to it, Charlotte? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. It's massive, isn't it? It's a monster of a coaster. I do really like the colour scheme for this too. And yeah, here's a look at the entrance just down here. Yeah, weather's looking good. We're in front of the hot, hot day today. Down here at Kings Island. But yeah, let's go and experience Orion. Very much looking forward to seeing how this rides. Five minutes there for our first ride of the day, Orion. And yeah, we found out that they actually opened it early for Platinum Pass holders. Yeah, we managed to get on with our Platinum Passes. And uh, yeah, in terms of the ride experience, like I say, it is classed as a hypercoaster model because the lift hill is 287 foot tall. However, it features the 300 foot drop on there. Uh, it's got a lot of mixed reviews, this coaster, and we found it to be a good ride, but nothing spectacular. I, I enjoyed it, but it, it didn't wow me. Like the airtime on there, there was just not a lot of it for a hypercoaster. Yeah. You'd expect so much more. It had some really nice turns and curves, and there was a really kind of intense helix, which was fantastic, um, which I did enjoy. Um, but it's like, look at the brake run. Like, it's really half the ground, quite a lot of wasted energy at the end of the ride. Would have liked to come more airtime hills. There was a big trim brake that kicked in on there. Uh, one of the weaker hypercoaster models, in my opinion, that one, which is really weird, especially because it's only three years old. It looks the part, but it just didn't really do that much, in my opinion. I was expecting it to do so much more, like Sean said, when we was coming into the brakes. I was expecting it to just do a lot more, and it just sort of ended. Yeah, I mean, I remember seeing this being constructed and the animations and all that kind of stuff online, and I looked at it and thought, it doesn't look like it's going to be that impressive, and it rides just kind of like I was expecting. It's a good B&M coaster, and it looks the part, uh, but it's nothing spectacular, that one, in my opinion. And I've got to say, crowd levels don't seem very busy at all this morning, which is good. And yeah, it was running three trains, Orion. I mean, they're all stacked up over there at the moment. Um, but yeah, it is running three. There's a look at the uh, brake run and just how tall it is there. It just would have been nice if I had a few more drops 
uh, and also maybe another helix down there at the bottom. Um, but anyway, yeah, I just wanted to also mention about the locker situation here. You can't take bags into the queue line or leave them in the station. You do actually need to put them in a locker. Obviously, quite a lot of parks um, they do that. However, they are free of charge, aren't they? Yeah, they are. With here, it's five dollars, and you can move them around the park, which yeah. isn't too bad. Yeah, that's not too bad. It's cheaper than up at Cedar Point. I do still feel like they should um, offer lockers for free if they don't want bags in the queue line or station. Um, yeah, it's just over here where you do that. And uh, yeah, $5 all day or $3 just for that location. As we're right next door, we're going to give Flight of Fear a go then now. This is an indoor roller coaster built by Premier Rides. It actually features four inversions. We've also got some great theming in the queue line here from what I can remember. Uh, I won't be able to show you that though because I've got to put my bag back in the locker just around there. Um, yeah, here's a look at the outside and we'll see you when we come off. Well, we waited 10 minutes there for Flight of Fear and yeah, we do love a good indoor coaster, don't we? I absolutely love an indoor coaster. I was looking forward to this one. We went into the queue line and it was so heavily themed. We're going into the spaceship, we're going into the station it was all themed but then on the right there was just no theming whatsoever yeah that's the thing it's one of them that um, you know you see this massive spaceship at the station which is very cool and you kind of launch it out into space uh, 54 mile an hour launch which is good um, and then yeah you've got four inversions throughout the layout which is great um, not the smoothest of rides a little bit rattly but it's not too uncomfortable and then inside the ride I think it would be better if it had more projections of stars and planets and that sort of thing really uh, they just lit up some of the track and there wasn't any theming in there uh, I think it would be better if it was a lot darker more kind of space mountain-esque in there but um, well still it's a good ride uh, I did enjoy it and like I say it's got a really good build-up um, with the queue line theme and yeah shame I couldn't have took you in there and shown you that theme in but uh, yeah it is fantastic in there and yeah you got this little vehicle just down here weird radio 137.0 I do like these little themed aspects and that's the thing with the Ryan being down there it's kind of like a whole space themed area yeah so it just worked really well area 72 of course a little nod to the opening year of the park and we're making our way now through Adventure Port, which is the new themed area for this year. And I've got to say, they've done a really good job with this round here. All the buildings, very colourful, lots to see. Some new flat rides down here as well. Soul Spin, Adventure Express down that way. And yeah, this is very nicely done. All the rock work, lots of props around. Yeah, they've done a really good job. And it looks great, actually, with Banshee there behind it. I do like the fact that Cedar Fair is starting to go more down the theme route. I mean, look at the op cabin over there. That's really nice. And you've got like all these random bits of cargo, barrels around. I do all like this kind of stuff. You know me, I like my theming more than anything. So yeah, it's nice to see them adding this round here. I can't really remember that much what it looked like round here before because obviously I've only been to this part once. Um, but yeah, this is a positive step in the right direction. It's got kind of themed audio, very kind of Mexican sort of vibes around here. It's really nice, isn't it? Yeah, this is lovely. The theming's really good. I like the audio machine. Sure. you got Cargo Loco just over there, which is a spinning barrels ride. Reminds me of Drunken Barrels a little bit, that. Cute. There we go. Looks great with Banshee there. There's the backdrop. Nice theme sign down there at the entrance. Yeah, that's a really nice little area. you got the boat just over there too. Yeah, this is really positive to see. Very nicely done themed area. Feels very kind of European, you know, what we're used to in a lot of our heavily themed European parks. Yeah, I do like the fact they're going more down this route, even in what used to be just amusement parks. Uh, they're really starting to think about the theming now. I'm right next to it, you've got Delirium just there. It's got a very impressive skyline, this park, hasn't it? Huge drop tower down there in front of us too as we make our way round towards Banshee and you're about to see that sign Charlotte and here it is the awesome sign for Banshee at Kings Island what do you think to that Charlotte? Oh, I absolutely love the sign for Banshee it's just so good isn't it? It's great this is a 2016 VNM inverted roller coaster with seven inversions and yeah here's a look at the ride I do love the colour scheme for this unfortunately it does have vest restraints which I'm not a big fan of on inverted coasters. It does take away a bit from the experience for me. However, the layout of this and the height of it is very impressive. Here she comes. Let's go and ride Banshee.
to say the operations on Banshee were fantastic. Three trains running, getting the train sent out very quickly on there too. How was your ride? I just found that so intense and the Vestra's trains were just so uncomfortable, like just digging in, I didn't enjoy it. I really just do not like the train design at all. I don't know what B&M were thinking when they came up with that, I'll be honest. It makes it one of the weaker inverted coasters for me. Uh, the vibrations of the trains, uh, I remember saying this last time, uh, but I felt like it has maybe got worse over the past four years. The trains just vibrate, it just doesn't ride like a and m Charlotte found it very forceful. I find it a little bit lackluster and forceless in places. Um, it looks the part off ride, it's a big coaster, and you look at some of the inversions here and thinking, wow, this is gonna be an incredible ride, but for me, it just doesn't really deliver that much. It's one of the weakest inverts, and that is mainly because of the trains for me. It wouldn't surprise me in the future if they even maybe replace the trains with the standard ones from B&M and not the vest, but um, I just don't think it rides very good. I, I think really for don't. me, the force, it was sort of pulling me forward, and it was the point I was trying to sh shut my eyes and just wait for it to end. Yeah, the trains have just got a vibration yeah, on there, the you know. From side to side. Yeah, you, and you can actually see it when you look at it as well. But uh, yeah, it's one of them. It really does look the part. It's one of them. I thought, oh, we'll come back this time, give it another go. I was thinking maybe I was really tired last time. Let's see how it rides. But no, my thoughts are still the same. Banshee, one of the weakest inverts for me, unfortunately. It's a good layout. I do love the uh, loop going around the lift hill. Um, but yeah, it's just not really got that much going for it for me. And that train design, I don't know what they were thinking. I'm not so good. glad that uh, they're not really continuing on with them on other inverts because yeah, the class inverted train design is the way forward. Right then, next up we're going on to the bat and you know me, I love a good old school arrow coaster. And yeah, I did really enjoy this last time. Arrow suspended coaster, same age as me, only 1993, it's 30 years old. A long queue line to walk down that one to the station however it's more than worth it and we walk straight on there two train operation and yeah that is an absolutely fantastic ride one of the best classic suspended coasters out there for me though. Oh, I completely agree. I'm not normally a massive fan of these style coasters, but that was brilliant. We got such a good swing on there. Yeah, and what I love about the bat is the location as well. I mean, you can see it kind of does a slow turn at the top uh, where you get to look over the park, see all the skyline, and then you drop straight down into the forest. Massive drop with a great swing. You got some big overbanks there and turns, and it's just a great overall ride. What's great about this one as well is the pacing. It really keeps the speed up to the brake run. You can see there when it went into the brakes at the end, shaking side to side. It's got a great swing on it fantastic classic coaster um, i really enjoyed this last time and yeah it was great to get back on it again really good classic arrow 30 years old so smooth really forceful and just an all-round good fun ride yeah really enjoyed it hey and just around the corner you've got one of the huge sky coasters here these are always good fun yeah it is an upcharge attraction however normally it'd be a lot more than what king's island are charging yeah it's actually only ten dollars per person Flies the holding groups one, two or three. Yeah, I think that's good value for one of these, actually. They're normally a lot more than that, aren't they? That's the cheapest one I've ever seen, though. It's not great value, $10. Yeah, I think that's great, and that's why it's busy. You know, it gets people on. If you keep your prices low, um, it gets people experiencing it, which is great. 
I've got to give it to Banshee though, that design with the lift hill with the loop going round, it does look fantastic, doesn't it? But yeah, we've done uh, four coasters, it's gone really well this morning. Hard doesn't seem too busy, but the good thing is, operations have been pretty solid so far. Uh, and yeah, we've got a lot of rides at this part, a lot of capacity, which is fantastic. Let's keep on riding. And there's a look at Invertigo, the ride we're heading on to next. And the hot Congo Falls just over here. Hey. Oh, that looks nice and appealing on a hot day. If we have time later on, might jump on there and have a bit of a cool off. You all right, Charlotte? Okay. <laughs> right over here, just there. Yeah, here it is, Vekoma in Vertigo. It's basically a boomerang, same layout, but hence the name in Vertigo is inverted. You sit underneath. Yeah, let's go and give this a ride. Nice colour scheme on this one. straight on to Invertigo just there and what does make that quite unique is that actually you can sit opposite each other which is cool. We sat opposite each other which was quite funny but I wasn't a massive fan of that. Yeah it was a bit of a headbanger that I was wasn't it. <laughs> yeah it reminded me of a Vekoma here a little bit that did of course with the trains um, kind of keep your head forward is the best thing to do yeah, on those. <laughs> yeah I'll whack my foot. Um, yeah it was all right that was nothing spectacular. Looks pretty off ride though doesn't it? Well, we're starting to make our way across to the other side of the park now, heading to Mystic Timbers, which I'm looking forward to getting back on. And yeah, it's a little bit of food, didn't we? We did add a pizza and some garlic bread. Yeah, and I had some chicken tenders and fries, of course. I've not had any for a few days. Uh, yeah, it was really nice, actually. Yeah, same sort of food that you find across the parks. Um, of course, you've got like the Cedar Fair parks that all have similar food. Six Flags parks, you get to know when you've done a few of that company's parks what, what they've got, don't they? Be getting, yeah. yeah, definitely. They all kind of do the same, similar thing. Yeah, they do. So at least we know what we're getting. The Eiffel Tower is very impressive. I'm hoping that it's going to open up later to go up, but I can't see anybody up there at the moment, which is a shame. Yeah, it's 314 foot tall. It's a uh, one third scale replica of the actual Eiffel Tower in Paris. So, yeah, that's a fun fact for you. Let's make our way down this way. Looking forward to Diamond back again. That's the BM Hype you can see over there. You know, all these buildings are really nice around here. Very picturesque. But yeah, we're going to head on to Mystic Timbers. It said 25 minute advertised wait. We had a look just on the app. See, I don't think that's too bad at all. Let's the food settle down before we have our ride. Well, we've made our way over here to the Miami River Lumber Co. I love the sign. We're about to find out what's in the shed. Love the vehicle out the front just here and the huge sign. All overgrown for this one. The theming outside is really nice. I'm looking forward to getting on there. What is in the shed, Charlotte? What is it? I don't know what's in there. <laughs> I can tell you what's through that way, though. It's a 2017 GCI wooden roller coaster with Millennium Flyer trains. Great theming. We love a good GCI. Let's go and give this a ride. Mystic Timbers.
it's there for our ride on Mystic Timbers GCI wooden roller coaster. One of the best wooden coaster manufacturers. I really do enjoy their rides. And yeah, it starts off, of course, with the lift hill, followed by a 109 foot banked drop to the left, which is awesome, isn't it? Yeah, the drop's really good. I think the coaster rides really well. And I do love the theme for it, like in the forest, with, like the trees and stuff taking over. Yeah, it's got some really whippy transitions. One minute you bang to the left, next minute to the right. And of course, it starts off with that big drop. And then a lot of the layout is actually quite low to the ground, uh, which makes it really fast throughout. The pacing on there is awesome. And yeah, you get some good pops of air time. No like big ejector or anything. Um, but yeah, we're towards the back of the train and we've got some really nice pops just making our way round. It takes you on a journey out into the forest. And yeah, the theme of it is great because you come into the big shed at the end, um, you've got a bit of music playing, and then, yeah, you actually have all these snakes that come up on the screens at the side, which is really cool. It's quite different going into that at the end instead of just sort of coming straight back round to the station because the theme in there was really good. Yeah, definitely. It's a very well themed ride, and yeah, I do like that aspect. It's got a nice themed soundtrack as well out the front. And just overall, it's a fantastic coaster. And yeah, GCI builds some amazing rides, they really do. And yeah, Mystic Timbers is certainly a fantastic experience. Really great to get back on that coaster. Up next, we're going for a ride on Diamondback. This is a 2009 BM Hyper Coaster. And yeah, I do love my hypers, and this is a fantastic ride from what I remember. I also love the sign out the front just here as well. Look at that. Diamondback. Oh, you got the snake just there, the track coming out of its mouth, which is absolutely awesome. Do not disturb. Love it. Right, let's get have a ride. It's Diamondback. About a 15 minute advertised wait for Diamondback. And yeah, the train's on here. We've got the tiered seating, very much like Shambhala at Port Aventura, one of my all time favourite coasters. And yeah, it's also got the water splash element down there, too. However, on Shambhala, it's a fake water splash created by the fountains at the side. With this one, it's a real one, as you can see from the pool down there. And that's created by the two metal plates on the back of the train. As they make their way through, it creates the splash, which is a really cool effect. Let's go and ride. Ten minutes there for our ride on Diamondback, and yeah, three trains in operation on there, getting them sent out really quickly. And you know what? By far, my favourite ride here at Kings Island. I love that. I completely agree. I enjoyed that so much. Like the layout was fantastic. Got some great airtime. The water splash. That coaster is just brilliant. Yeah, and of course you got a huge drop at the start of the ride, 210 foot, but it feels bigger. We was on the back row, whipped out the seat. And yeah, what's great about that as well is the train design. I love that kind of staggered seating because uh, instead of having a row directly in front of you, you get a great view don't you yeah you do because you've got like a two and then a two close you get the view of the whole train which is much better definitely we got some fantastic airtime on there really nice ejector uh, you've got the big hills on there as well um, a nice turnaround section I noticed there they're actually in the process of repainted it by the looks of it that's really good to see I like to see when parks like keep stuff looking fresh yeah especially when it's the best ride here exactly. like that was amazing I really enjoyed that I love a good B&M hyper um, yeah that is a fantastic ride then you get some great ejector air uh, on the hill coming down into the water splash as well we was on the
on the back. You feel a few little bits, don't it's you? It's nice and refreshing with that nice water <laughs> breeze coming over yeah, you. Yeah, just nice that was. But I tell you what though, it just really made you question the decision of why they did build Orion in the same park. Um, because obviously everyone's got the different opinions, but um, for me, Diamondback is far superior. It's also a hyper, and I know Orion's bigger and it's got the bigger drop, um, but for me, there's not even a, a close comparison, I is it? I completely agree, like, there's so much better. It is so much better. It makes you think, well, it was a really strange decision going Very for strange. Orion. I think they were trying to bring a ride kind of like Fury 325 at Carowinds to this park, but it just didn't quite hit the mark. But uh, we'll give Orion another go later. Uh, we know that it apparently warms up, so we'll see. But uh, yeah, Diamondback was fantastic. It's a great hypercoaster, that one of the best out there. Well, we're just coming past the station and the train was pulling in, so we thought we'll have a ride here on the Kings Island Railway. You know me, I love a good railroad. And yeah, you get some great views looking at the rides from on here. And here we go. Awesome view there of Mystic Timbers. Seems like the look at the structure down there though, doesn't it? There you go. And a little walk round, checking that everything's okay. Oh, and there's them awesome airtime hills. The camelbacks of Diamondback just there. Perfect timing. That is a spectacular coaster. For me, the two best rides in the park right next to each other here. Diamondback and Mystic Timbers. And yeah, there's that curved drop. Yeah, they're in the rest of the layout's pretty low down. And yeah, you can see how they've done some repainting there. If you look at the top bit, that's not been done yet, and the bottom section has. Good to see them looking after the ride. What a location, though. Wow. That is a great view. Look down there at the rapids. And Missy Timbers again. Yeah, look how low down it is. Just goes to show you don't need massive high to make a great ride. And yeah, this is the turnaround section with the tunnel up there. Of course, tunnels also add to the experience on any coaster, but especially a Woody. That's really special. I love it when that happens on trains. When you're riding one and then you get to see another one pass by. Very swift operations on here. That's the thing. Some trains can take ages to load up, but no, this one really just gets moving. So just pull into the station down here for Soak City, which is the water park here at Kings Island. Yeah, it's quite cool. It's got its own station down here. Yeah, yeah, they kind of loop round. You don't see that very often. Well, I think we know why the park's not that busy today. It was in the water park. I mean, look at this. Most people got off the train and exited over into the water park. Yeah, which is great for us. Making the most of the park itself. Not even two o'clock yet, and we've done loads. We really have. Do love the railroad, though. One of my all-time favorite theme park attractions, trains, when they've got them. And yeah, this is a really nice one. Big locos, and yeah, massive carriages. Horse just over here. Horse. You like horses, don't you, Charlotte? Nice little building. The end at Canton Cove. Yeah, it takes you quite a few back of house areas this train, but you also get some nice theme in there, and of course, it's worth coming on for that. And the awesome views of Diamondback and Mystic as well. There it is, the famous shed on Mystic Timbers. <laughs> I remember when they were building it, there were so many rumours. People were like, oh, it's going to have a drop track, it's going to have this. Yeah, it's just nicely themed in there. Nothing spectacular, but yeah, it does make it at the end of the ride. You're still just kind of waiting on the brake run. 
I was like, right around there on the train. You do get some great views around. Like I say, it's not the longest to lay out, but it's a beautiful train. Some great views, especially of Diamondback and Timbers. Oh, really nice relaxing ride around there on the train. Yeah, you got Rivertown Funnel Cakes just off to the left. It's a nice themed area. And yeah, Whitewater Canyon, which is those rapids we had a little bit of a view of when we was over on the train there. I just love how Diamondback towers over this part of the park here. And yeah, I'm glad they repainted it actually. It looks really nice. I remember it looking a bit faded last time. Making our way now down to the Beast Wooden Roller Coaster. Oh, and here's the awesome entrance sign for the Beast. Look at that. I do really love the signs here at American Parks. And yeah, this wooden roller coaster opened back in 1979. And yeah, we're going to give it a ride. Really excited to get back on this. Fantastic coaster in the daytime. And apparently it's a great ride at night, but I wouldn't know after my last visit. <laughs> Hopefully we'll get a night ride on there tonight. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. That's the aim. But I'm not going to get too excited. I wouldn't <laughs> Just in case. But uh, yeah, fingers crossed we'll get a night ride with it being a 10 o'clock close. But let's go and give this a ride. In the daytime, it's the Beast. And I believe the done a lot of retracking on here which I've heard has made it even better. Just five minutes there for our ride on the beast, a legendary coaster here at Kings Island. 7,300 feet of track. How was your ride what on there? What an impressive coaster that was. I really enjoyed it. I did prefer the second half to the first, but it's just so long. I'm praying we get a night ride on that lake because that will be fantastic. <laughs> Fingers crossed we do. I'm not going to build my hose just in case, but it's still a good fun ride in the daytime. And yeah, like Charlotte said, it's two halves. Um, you've got two lift hills on there. You straight out of the station, round the corner and up into the first lift. And the first section is longer. You've got some
some drops on there. They're not really steep. They're more kind of long, drawn-out drops, but some good corners, and you really feel the speed on there, don't yeah, you? Yeah, you're just going forward. It feels like you're launching, but obviously you're not. Yes, yeah, <laughs> that's the thing with it being quite flat, some of the track sections. Definitely. Really fast. It makes you feel like it as well, which is awesome. Along with that, you then make your way around towards the second lift hill, climbing up just there, and then, yeah, you do a really long drop. Um, not that steep it's again, so but it's long, and then into a tunnel, which is great. And it's kind of like a massive helix that bends all the way around. You go back through that tunnel again, and then round and up into the brake run. But what makes that ride is the stunning location. It's the forest all around it. It's all the trees. It's the tunnels. And yeah, it's a really good fun ride. You can really feel the speed on there. Oh, I just really hope we get a night ride on it. Fingers crossed. <laughs> like, if you saw my vlog from here four years ago, it wasn't the best ending. Didn't get to experience it. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. The weather's looking good for tonight. And uh, yeah, hopefully the park's still going to remain open until 10 o'clock so we can uh, actually get the ride on at this time. It's a famous night ride. It's even got a sign on the operator's cabin saying famous night rides on the beast. So hopefully, finally going to get to experience that tonight. I do love this part of the park. It's got a fantastic skyline here at Kings Island. And yeah, you've got all the nice buildings here. Mystic Timbers down there at the back. And of course, Diamondback just down here too. Yeah, really nice, this part of the park. And up next, we're going on to the Batlot Stunt Coaster, manufactured by Premier Rides. This opened here in 2005. And here it is, the Batlot Stunt Coaster. And yeah, as you can see, it's got some pretty good theming on here, actually. You've got a massive upwards helix through the parking structure just there, which is pretty cool. I do like the train design on this. And yeah, you've got like a lorry over there, shipping containers. Yeah, it's pretty well themed. Let's go give it a go. And here's the entrance, and yes, yeah, special effects, lighting, fog, and flame effects they use on this attraction. And I know that the flames are working because I've already seen them, which is good. Let's go and have a ride. I do love this how it's kind of come through the billboard. It reminds me of the effect on the swarm at Thorpe Park a little bit, how it's kind of pushed through the billboard. Yeah, really good effect. Hey, there's the fire. Well, we waited 10 minutes there for our ride on the Batlot Stunt Coaster. Oh, I do like the train design there with the little cars. And yeah, I think the right term for this one is don't judge a book by its cover. It's actually quite forceful, isn't it, with a 40 mile an hour launch at the start. It is. The force on there was fantastic. I was a bit like, ooh, but that coaster <laughs> was amazing. I absolutely loved it. Like all the theming around there, I absolutely loved it. Yeah, so you've got the upwards helix, which is quite forceful yeah, at the it start. Was very forceful. Like the round the, the, uh, was the parking lot structure oh, just up so there. Good. You, know, you come down the drop, you've got like some S bends and quite quirky, or like cop cars at the side. You then come up to the top where that train is now, make a stop behind the container. And yeah, you've got a show scene with a helicopter, the kind of shooting at you. Uh, then you get the fire effect, which was on, which was great. Really enjoyed enjoyed that. In fact, you're going to see it blast in just a second. And then afterwards, you actually drop down through this metal shed. Um, lots of little bunny hills. And then, of course, come through the sign. It's not the longest to rise, but you know what? It's a good fun coaster, that I is. absolutely love that. It's fantastic. The Batlot Stunt Coaster. Yeah, we only waited 10 minutes as well for that. What a fun ride. Right opposite here, what's now a huge empty space that used to stand Vortex. And yeah, I got on that last time I was here. It was a huge arrow looping coaster and I really enjoyed that attraction. So I'm quite sad that it's been removed actually. It may not have been the smoothest, but you know me, I do love my old school arrow ride. Very forceful, very intense. And it used to be massive on the landscape of the park just here. But yeah, it was removed back at the end of the 2019 season. And yeah, it's a shame. Nothing's replaced it there yet, but I'm sure it will do at some point in the future. Oh, look at this ice cream. Yeah, I thought it's a beautiful day again today, so I'm going to make the most of it. Nice ice cream, $7.49 with the sprinkles on just there. It looks and tastes absolutely delicious. Charlotte's just getting one too. Oh, well, the ice cream was very enjoyable there. Just what you want on a nice hot day. Summer is here, enjoying an ice cream at Kings Island. And yeah, you've got the great pumpkin coaster just over here. You do need a child with you to go on this ride. And yeah, last time I did manage to get on there. Do you fancy giving it a go, Charlotte? <laughs> nah, you're not as big into counting the creds, are you? No, it's very cute though, with all the pumpkins. Yeah, there you go, a little uh, pumpkin oh. coast. Yeah, I do remember last time uh, getting me riding on there, getting the credit. But so uh, yeah, you've got two other family coasters here in the area that we can ride. Obviously, this is the smallest coaster at the park. And that's the thing, it's important for all parks to have something for all ages. And yeah, this Snoopy area is massive. It's got loads of rides. One of my favorites up here is with the helicopters up there. I think that looks awesome. Our yes. little copters going round. That's 
nice. Yeah, it's nice that is, isn't it? Yeah, they've got a little suspended coaster up here and also a woody as well. So we're going to check those out. And in terms of big coasters, really, we've just got one more left to do. Yeah, we've done really well today, haven't we? Yeah, it's three o'clock and like we've got round it's really quick. Yeah, the water park's where people are going today, which it's worked great for us though today. It means we've got loads of time here for re-rides and just soaking up the atmosphere um, and seeing other bits. Then we're going to go and watch a show this afternoon. We like our shows. Uh, so we're going to check that out. Hey, <laughs> the Great Pumpkin Coast is busy today. Look at that. That's one of the biggest lines. Here he is, Snoopy. Oh, cookies look nice, Snoopy. There you go. <laughs> well, the cookies look delicious. Oh, I wouldn't have that. They're probably about $20. Yeah. <laughs> And here's a look at the entrance to Woodstock Express. Nice little family wooden coaster down here. Owned in 1972, manufactured by Philadelphia Toboggan Coasters. Yeah, let's have a look down here. We're running one train. Please expect a longer than usual wait time. Well, it doesn't look too busy to me. Maybe about 10 minutes. Let's give it a go. We waited 15 minutes for our ride on Woodstock Express. Great little family coaster, that. Oh, that was so cute. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's really nice, isn't it, that ride? It's small woody, which is yeah, awesome. it's perfect for a kid's first wooden coaster. And yeah, the little bunny hills on there, the drops, it's very smooth too. Um, perfect way to start off someone's coaster ride in future. And yeah, there was somebody sat behind us actually, and she was like, oh, it's your first coaster yeah, ride. Yeah, so exciting. Yeah, oh, I love that. Yeah, it's really nice and special. Yeah, it's a great family area here. Loads of things like car rides, Dodgems, lots of other flat rides. You got a Zampilla disco over there too. Yeah, loads around here. It's one of them discos like the one at Cedar Point. But yeah, it's not like a disc. It's like a flat kind of ride system they're coming across just there. It's always a good time. Oh, we're having a great day so far here at Kings Island. And just over here, you've got Flying Ace Aerial Chase. Like the name for this one, like how it rhymes. And yeah, this looks like it's been repainted recently actually. Yeah, the comb is a suspended coaster, however, it doesn't ride great this because of the restraints that it's got. Very bulky for a ride of this size. Looks the part though. We have a comb, we've come a long way with this type of ride now. And there we go, you've also got a log flume down here in Planet Snoopy as well. And yeah, it seems to be down at the moment, but yeah, it's quite well themed with the water wheel and yeah, some of the other buildings around there too. Yeah, great family area that, loads of awesome attractions. It's really big and yeah, there's loads in there for everyone, which is great fun. Well, I've got to say, Orion really does look the part from over here and we're going to give it another go shortly, see if it's warmed up a little bit. Apparently it does do, so I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, you got King Mills Antique Autos just over there. Nice classic car ride. It's off to the right here. Shake, rattle and roll, flat ride. And yeah, talking of flats, we're gonna head down this way and have a go on the Wind Seeker. We've also got one of these up at Cedar Point and it's perfect looking at the views, especially at Cedar because of the gorgeous location. Um, but here, we'll get some nice views looking over the park and especially over towards Orion and yeah, just the skyline of the park. Was hoping to be able to go up the Eiffel Tower today, but it seems like it's closed. That would have been great because we could have filmed up there and took some photos. Um, but they have got one at King's Dominion, so hopefully that one will be open. But yeah, I did that last time. I was really hoping for this one here. So we can film up there because obviously we won't be able to take you on Windseeker. But yeah, look at this down here, really nice with the Ryan just up there. Racer and of course the classic cars just here. And yeah, we've got two more coasters left to do and plenty of time for re-rise and just soaking up the atmosphere of the park. It's going to be great. It's also fireworks tonight too, which we're going to hopefully see from the queue line of the beast. That's the plan. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Oh, I do really enjoy those Windseeker attractions. They're not really thrilling unless you scare the highs. However, I do love the views across the park. Fantastic, aren't the they? The views up there was absolutely brilliant. Like looking over the whole entire park and they got a lovely breeze. Oh yeah, it was really nice, especially on a hot day. I tell you what, we've done really well for weather this trip. However, it looks likely that could be changing in the next couple of days. Storms are coming, oh, aren't no, they? Oh no, storms and rain are coming. Oh, we'll see what happens, but we'll make the most of it whilst it's like this. If anything, it's been a bit too hot, but you know what? I'm not going to complain about it because yeah, at least it's dry. Oh no, we're going to be getting storms, sadly. Oh, we'll see what happens, but uh, here we go. We're going to continue on with our day here at Kings Island and yeah I just want to say uh, this is really beautifully presented this car ride here all the landscaping and uh, the fountains in the middle brilliant and here you can see it again there behind us we did it first ride this morning hopefully it's warmed up a bit now it's been operating for like six hours let's go and give a Ryan another go Well, we've just done two more back-to-back -back rides on Orion, making the most of a walk online, which is fantastic for us today here at Kings Island. And I've got to say, the coast has definitely warmed up. We had a front row followed by a back row. And yeah, it's definitely a front row ride. You can feel the top speed on there, 91 miles an hour, especially on the first drop, which was pretty spectacular on the front. Some good hang time. And then of course, yeah, down at the bottom, you could really feel the G-forces. And even more so, uh, going through some of the other drops and elements of this ride. And yeah, the upwards helix here, uh, absolutely fantastic. It really was, especially on the front. We then had a ride on the back row. And yeah, definitely warmed up compared to earlier on. Um, you could feel the force a bit more, also more air time however for me it's definitely a front row coaster i'll be i certainly rate it a lot higher now than did earlier on so if you are coming to this park especially on a busy day and it's got a big queue i would say go and do other rides first and come back to it because it's one of those that really warms up this is but uh, there you go how did you find it charlotte especially on the front oh, it was much better on the front row it really took me by surprise it was quite intense to be honest it was like it's like a completely different ride than earlier a lot more on the front row than on the back yeah i mean that's the case it's warmed up so much i mean with bnms i don't think you normally feel that much of a difference at different times of the day but this one you really do maybe it's because of the heat as well but yeah it was brilliant down there and operations i've got to say really fast on there now three trains and yeah they are getting them sent out like look at this one just going through the upward helix there this one's uh, going up the lift hill other ones going into the stations yeah really swift um, which is great to see and yeah they're literally running down uh, the station getting them sent which is fantastic and bear in mind i didn't mention this earlier but it has also got seat belts as well as the clamshell restraint so to be getting the trains out like that very impressive all three trains on the move there are uh, brilliant to see it really is but yeah that was a lot better than earlier on that's kind of how i was hoping it was going to ride but yeah ryan definitely warms up <laughs> Right then, on to our final major coaster for us to ride here today, other than re-rides, and that's Racer. Yeah, a park original from 1972. Set of wooden roller coasters. Of course, you've got the blue and the red side. And yeah, they've done a really good job with painting this up. I mean, look how nice it is. It looks great, it really does. Two different tracks, let's give them a ride. <laughs>
Well, we're just on both sides there on race. So we started off with the red side and then followed by the blue. And yeah, I've got to say, they've done some great retracking work on there. I know Gravity Group have done it. And yeah, fantastic that was, wasn't that was it? That was brilliant. It was running so smooth. It almost didn't feel like a woody. Yeah, it was really nice, that was. I very much enjoyed it. It's good to see them looking after it. It's a classic here at the park. And of course, one of their original rides here at Kings Island. It looks great as well, how they've repainted it. And yeah, I believe they've got a little bit more retracking to do on the second half of the blue side. And then it'll all be done. But yeah, fantastic. Fantastic. Really nice how they've looked after a classic ride here at the park and I do love a good old school Woody. Well, we've got one more coaster left to ride here at this park and it's just around this corner. It's an old Arrow Mine train. So let's go and get on that. And here it is, the new entrance to Adventure Express. Yeah, even though this coaster opened in 1991, it's part of that new themed area that only opened last week. And yeah, I do like what they've done around here with all the theming. If this is the route that Cedar Fair are going down, it makes me very happy. More theme park than amusement park. And yeah, you can see they put all new lights in down here, um, all the buildings. Yeah, it looks great. Like, really impressed with this area of the park. And yeah, the ride itself looks walk on. Let's go and give it a go. As far as family mine train coasters go, that is definitely one of the best outside of a Disney park. I thought that was great. That was so much fun. Like the theming around it was fantastic. And as we came up the lift hill towards the station, the theming in there was brilliant. I still want it to end. Yeah, there's done a lot of theming upgrades from what I remember on there. And of course now it's part of this themed area. It was fantastic. Um, and yeah, there was actually like a crash train in the middle with all monkeys taking over Holding eating bananas. bananas. That was really cool. Some great near misses. And the coaster itself, actually quite forceful. Some really nice helixes and drops on there. Quite a few indoor tunnels. I thought that was really enjoyable. Great family coaster. And uh, yeah, the theme that they've added really enhances it. And like I say, it's really good to see the Cedar Fair chain really starting to think more about theming. It's what really makes the parks over in Europe. And it's nice to see more of that coming over to what were just amusement parks in America. Um, and yeah, it's really nice to see them actually having more themed elements. I look forward to seeing where they go in the future. <laughs> Now, of course, we love entertainment when we go to the parks. And yeah, they've got quite a few live shows here at Kings Island. Didn't get a chance to see any last time, so I'm looking forward to this. Phantom Theatre Encore, a tribute to the original Kings Island Dark Ride. This sounds fantastic over here in the Kings Island Theatre. And yeah, they've actually got one of the Doom Buggies just here. It's a shame the Dark Ride doesn't exist anymore, but they've done a show as like a tribute to it. Is that a sign that maybe it's going to come back in the future? I'd love to see that. But uh, here we go, we're going to make our way into the theatre. And yeah, let's go and see what this is like. I would die for my life on the stage. She gave our lives for the spotlight. Not the
three glorious headliners will now present their palpably pulse pounding performance. Excuse me, excuse me, boss. Not now, Larry. I'm using a little. Don't care if I am making a nice living wage. I would die for my life on the stage. Oh, well, we do love seeing entertainment out of the parks. And yeah, it was great to go and see that show. And yeah, in terms of the production, it was 30 minutes in length, some really nice music, costumes in there, big cast actually, wasn't the it? costumes in there was fantastic, and I think they did a really good job in that. Yeah, definitely. I think some of the music was maybe a little bit repetitive in places. Um, but overall, it was a nice show, and the air conditioning was very much appreciated on a day like today too. Um, yeah, the performers did a great job. Obviously, we didn't know anything about the old ride that used to be here. However, um, I'd imagine there was a lot of jokes and nods to that form a dark ride here at Kings Island and yeah it's always good to see shows at the parks just back down here now by the entrance with the Eiffel Tower there still closed unfortunately was really hoping to get up there this time but yeah shame it looks like it's going to be closed for the day Brother says game over Some more shots there from around Kings Island. It's a beautiful evening now. Sun's just starting to go down a little bit. And yeah, gonna get some re rising shortly. And also, I'm about to go on the drop tower just over here. So yeah, I'm gonna put in some off ride footage for you all of drop tower. Oh, well, the drop tower is absolutely fantastic. Some brilliant views from up there. Charlotte's having a good dance here at Kings Island. Atmosphere is building up for tonight. 10 o'clock close. Hey! Look <laughs> out, <can't> Rumbo. <laughs> well, Kings Island's only home to one dark ride, but we thought we'll go on here. Yeah, it's Boo Blasters on Boo Hill just over here. So, yeah, it's going to have a ride on this. Very nice facade out the front for this family interactive dark ride. <laughs> Yes, this is an Omnimover style ride. And yeah, this was the old dark ride that we went to watch the show about earlier on. I'd love to see them kind of turn it back into that. Obviously, it's more family friendly now. I'd imagine it was more horror themed back then. But yeah, I'd love to see them do that retheme. Or like an updated version. Yeah, Omnimover style ride that's interactive. You don't really see that. Right, which is there from Boo Blasters, and yeah, walk straight onto there. And with it being an Omni Mover ride system, vehicles continually moving, which is great. Now we never got to experience the original Phantom Theatre, however, I would have loved to have seen it. We've just looked at a few photos, and it looked like there were so many set pieces and animatronics in there. So I bet people were really upset when it went. With all the emphasis, though, on that old attraction, with the show being here, I would love to see them bring that back and restore it back to how it was. And yeah, I know it's kind of part of Snoopy on the side here, but there's another pathway that leads to the main 
entrance street so they could create like a horror themed area here and with the direction they seem to be going with themed experiences I'd love to see that reskin because yeah it's nothing spectacular I'm sure the kids love it though like shooting all the targets but yeah it's probably one of them that you know you go on it now thinking oh I wonder what it was back in the day and so yeah a lot of people who are really fond memories of the park probably have amazing memories of that attraction uh, back in its heyday while we've done loads more re-rides here at Kings Island, it's been really quiet for us today, which is fantastic. We've just had another ride on Orion on the front row. And I'll tell you what, that coaster is riding completely different to earlier on today. This morning when we rode, I kind of felt a little bit underwhelmed. However, now it's riding beautifully. And look at the blue light there on the lift hill. Along with that, we did Diamondback again, which is fantastic. Another ride on Mystic Timbers and Banshee too. Um, but yeah, I'll tell you what, we've been really lucky today with crowd levels. And shortly, it's time for that night ride on the beast. Oh, look at all the lights on the buildings down here. Great atmosphere. Hey, Charlotte. What a fantastic vibe down there by the Eiffel Tower as everybody's gathering ready for the fireworks. And yeah, we'd like to have seen them from down the front of the park, but we need to make sure we get this night ride on the beach. So we're going to watch them from the queue line. We're going to get in nice and early now. There's like 45 minutes to go until close and just kind of hold back just to make sure that we get it. We don't want to miss this, do we, Charlotte? <laughs> <laughs> and we know that obviously the ride's going to stop operating for about 15 to 20 minutes whilst the fireworks are going ahead but then we'll be in the line uh, ready for afterwards when the ride continues operating so yeah i'm looking forward to this night ride on the beast finally i've been waiting years for this so yeah i gonna get in the queue line i'll get a bit of footage of the fireworks if we can see them from the queue oh and here we are then in the queue line for the beast and we get the best of both worlds because we get the fireworks too over the station which is awesome it counts towards earning fantastic prizes that you can redeem your future business. This is like fireworks to finally celebrate getting a night ride on the beast. I'm so excited for this. Just download the app, enter your email address, and redeem. On this episode of Inside Track, strap in and make sure your light bars are final. Hey, and there's the drones above us. And awesome. On installing lap bars, and from there, up and get the sides here actually surrounded by upholstery and all the steaming pieces and open out the door. Well the fireworks ended about 15 minutes ago, it's pitch black now and we're just waiting for the all clear before the beast can reopen. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go, test train cycling. And this is it, I'm so, so excited for this. Many years in the making. Now we're in the usual up, 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 and out of here. So sit up right along, guys, enjoy your ride around the beach. Let's have some fun. Well, there we go. I have waited for that moment for many years and finally had a night ride on the beast here at Kings Island. And what an experience that was. That was absolutely fantastic. The whole train was just whooping and screaming all the way around. It was brilliant. Everyone was just having a brilliant time on there. And honestly, I've waited so long for that moment to finally join the club of a beast night ride. There was just a couple of lights on on the lift hill and that is all. It was really dark out there. It's one of the best night rides you can do, isn't oh, it? That? it was absolutely brilliant. We just had a massive smile on our face the whole way around. Oh, incredible it really was.
was. And then, of course, the rest of our day here at Kings Island. I'm really happy to be standing here um, after about a visit four years ago and say we've had an absolutely brilliant day. We've got on so many rides. Um, it's been really quiet, hasn't it? Yeah, it's not been busy at all. We've had multiple re-rides on pretty much everything. We've had like six rides on Orion, and I want to say that really did warm up throughout the day, which was brilliant too. Um, it started off a bit slower, but you know what? It really got better, and yeah, I really enjoyed it. Along with that, of course, Mystic Timbers. That's a brilliant ride, I isn't it? I really enjoyed that. It was just so fast, and we found out what was in the shed. Yeah, we did. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. I felt like that was really even better than my last visit. I think for me, though, my favourite ride of the park does have to be Diamondback. I think it's a brilliant hyper coaster, and yeah, it's got a little bit of a rattle to it, but you know what? Um, it's a great ride. I did really enjoy the amount of airtime the air on there. Yeah, time on there is just fantastic. It's such a good coaster. You got some great classics. I enjoyed Racer. Of course, the bat was brilliant too. Banshee, not so much. That's the, <laughs> one of the weaker rides here for me out of the bigger, uh, bigger coast that they've got. Um, but you know what? Uh, everyone's got their own different opinions, and for me, it just doesn't, you know, it just doesn't do that much um, with that train design. I love the but, sign. <laughs> yeah, operations today have been fantastic too. Uh, rides have been running multiple trains, been getting the train sent out, which has been awesome. Great entertainment, great atmosphere, fantastic lighting, all the theming, all the um, fountains down here too. It really has been an epic day, and it's been great to come back to this park and just see it all and uh, yeah, just take it all oh, in, hasn't absolutely it? Absolutely lovely. It's been fantastic. There we go. It's been a long action packed vlog. It's been a long day. It's been a good like 13 hour day for us. It's 11 o'clock. We're leaving the park, but what a brilliant day at Kings Island. I've loved coming back here. Great visit. This is how it should have been in 2019, but we'll come back this time with Charlotte. Oh, I've absolutely and loved it. It's been brilliant. What a great day. Next up on the channel, we're heading down to Tennessee, and of course, Dollywood's coming up. We're very excited for that park. Uh, let's just hope the weather's going to be okay oh, for I us. So. Well, there we go. From Kings Island, that leaves me one final thing to say. Get out there and keep on riding. We'll see you in the next vlog.